Hi there and welcome to my 10th tutorial on Visual C++ 2010 Express Edition and in this tutorial I will show you how to create arrays but also how to use them and I will also talk more about arrays in general and first of all as you can see I have uh, my main solution created with void main and simple um, basic libraries included already and what you need to do, what you, what you, what you need to know about arrays uh, is array is what I like to call something like a second level or advanced level of a variable. And basically, if you have a variable, you just assign one value to it. But with the array, you can assign more than one value, um, which will be hold in different boxes like or indexes for example if you have array with a range of five integers let's say you can have five different integers um, in that array and uh, five different values and uh, you can have five the same values but those will be stored in different places like in different indexes or boxes uh, as some people like to call it and uh, so what type of variables you can I mean arrays you can have and pretty much every type of variable as you have you can also do this with the array so integers strings and booleans and so on uh, you can use this with array and how to declare an array and it is pretty much simple as it, it resembles the variable but you just need to include the range so first of all we have a, a array type like integer then we have a name like number and then we have a range let's say five in the square bracket you always include it in the square bracket and you end it with the semicolon now you have create an array and if you want to input something to an array you need to specify for example the index of the array or just simply uh, input a, a value to each of them um, by manually or, or by loops or something like this so basically there are a couple of ways you can input something to the array and one of these way is to write in the same line you write each and every value for each and every index like so and you close it and now each um, integer in that uh, array will have a specific value assigned to it. Now we start from the index zero. We have a um, number in the square bracket zero. That's the first index. And this value, which is one, will be assigned to this index. Now the comma separates the indexes. Therefore, if we um, set the comma here, now we move on to next index, which is one. We assign this value, ne next index, and so on. Till we, um, till we done with the index, till we finish. Now, if you, for example, imp more values like so, you will notice that this is an error, and because you have range of five uh, integers in the array, so there, you you can't just you you can't just go over the up order, and that is the one way of doing it. It's quite neat, but it can take a long time if you have an array of 100 integers or even 1000 integers. So it's not that useful. The second way to do it manually, of course, and is to just write number, for example, zero, which is the first index, and equal to one. But again, if you do something like this, and um, you, you need to specify each and number and index to a specific value then it will take you some time if you have quite large um, array but sometimes it has to be done for example if you create a library of the words and um, well you need to first write them and then you can use them something like this but there are other ways you can input something yeah for instance loop uh, you can you can use loops in two different ways you can use loop uh, to assign uh, some kind of variable to the uh, each index of the array 
or you can get the user to input some kind of values into those indexes. For example, how to do the first one I'm talking about, um, for loop, for example, and this one, this one. For loop, so I have int i equals zero, normal for loop, and then as I have range, um, then as I have range five, so i is need to be less than five, because that will be up to index number four, so you need to remember that we count indexes from zero, and i plus plus. Okay, so this is an array created here, I have for loop, now assign. Okay, so first of all, I need to say number, and now as this is a loop, I don't need to specify which uh, index I want to assign it to. I can simply say i, and each time the loop goes around, it will increase the i, so I will actually uh, increase the number and the index as well. And I can assign it to some kind of variable, uh, I haven't created one, so I will just assign it to one, i, sorry. So each time the loops goes, it uh, loop, um, basically, the number, um, the index, 0, then 1, 2, 3, will be assigned to i, which is also 0, 1, 2, so it will be going correspondingly. Uh, now, to print an array, you also will need probably a for loop or a while loop or something like this, because you need to, you want to print, for example, all of the values in the array, so you can just print, uh, print number 1, number 2, number 3, and so on. It, it will take some time. So you use for loop for that as well. So basically you get the for loop int i as well, equals zero. The same condition actually. i is less than five and i plus plus. Then you add the action and basically see out and say no and and let's say number and also i and uh, sorry i so each time the loop goes around, it will print out from zero to, to four uh, each element element of the array and then line. Let me show you this actually. So yeah, I'm starting the program and you can see the array have printed zero, one, two, three, and four. So as I said, this is one way of doing this because uh, for loop are much more useful than, for example, simple input from the from the programmer, like you just input stuff to it. Unless you need it, like as I said, for libraries or something like this, it is uh, useful when you input yourself. For example, for the world, world, world library, you have specific words and stuff like this. And the other way to do it is um, ask user for the input. So we have um, C in and uh, where is it? Um, C in and some kind of variable. I haven't created one. I will just uh, I will just create one now. Int number in. I just equal it to zero. Okay. And number i equals to number in. Hmm. Oh yeah. So this time, I will have to input my array first. So I will input something, and now we can see the outcome. And um, as I said, um, it's not. It depends on the situation and the program you're creating, uh, which type of input you want to get. The same goes for output. Actually, output, as you can see, you can use um, a, a for loop to output something. We can also use a um, normal way to, to just basically output something like um, you say C out and C, C out and number, for example, I don't know, one, two. We can also do something like this. But as I said, it depends on the situation. You, you, you have to use different skills and uh, so, so, such things. So that's how you create an. Um, numeric array and it pretty much doesn't do anything um, I don't know I would say interesting because you can have dots with it so 
What about different arrays? I will show you a string one as well. Um, let me change it to string. What's it? Yeah, it's small letter. So I have now string array, and um, I will assign something straight ahead and uh, not to play with the. Okay, let's say uh, John. Uh, what else? Um, I don't know, my mind is blank. Um, no. <sighs> Come on, brain, some workout. Um, and one last one, let's say uh, Sam. All right. Okay, so I have inputs already. Um, and what can I do with it? Um, as you know already, strings can use uh, methods because they are classes. So the string array can use those methods as well. And let me show you an example. So for example, num uh, I haven't changed the, the name, but it doesn't matter. Number, number, and let's say something like one dot, and you see uh, the list of those uh, accessible methods you can use with um, the string. And basically, this thing works pretty much on the same basis as with the normal string, but you can operate on more uh, efficient way as you have an array, so you have more um, more strings to operate on. In one place like uh, as, it, as it is an array so basically this is how you create an array um, and you ha that's how you get an input and output and uh, soon I will show you how to create procedures because this is quite the end of this tutorial and with the, with the when the procedures come I will also show you how to manipulate the array in more I would say advanced or useful way or that's a better word, in more useful way, so that it will come handy in the future. As I said, this is the end of the tutorial. I hope you liked it and visit my YouTube channel and also web page. Also subscribe to the channel if you like it and I will see you next tutorial. Bye.